This week, Stuttgart, Germany has been host to the world's best gymnast for the 49th edition of the World Gymnastics Championships. And it's been a week to remember for the greatest gymnast of all time, Simone Biles. Her three gold medals in Stuttgart have put her in a tie for most career world championship medals. Today, she should pass that mark and add yet another record to her astonishing career. NBC Sports welcomes you to the World Gymnastics Championships presented by Olympic Channel, home of Team USA. Final day of competition here in Stuttgart. Fans filing into Hans Martin Schleyer Hall to watch the men and the women. It's day two of the Apparatus Finals. Glad you're with us, Terry Gannon alongside the Olympic champs, Nastia Lukin and Tim Daggett. Simone Biles is not done yet, right to the end. Two more events for her today, the beam and the floor exercise. But guys, before we get to that, let's just reflect on the week that's been for Simone Biles and what we've seen. Three medals, all of them gold, including helping Team USA to another gold in the team final. Well, you know what, Terry? She was actually making history before the medal rounds True. even started. She came here to Germany and unveiled two brand new skills, triple twisting double back on the floor exercise and a double twisting double back on the balance beam. And both of those skills went down in the code as another Biles. So it's been so exciting to be able to watch her here just from day one, of course, went on to that team final, was golden there again, and that was just the start for her here. And you know what? Some Simone Biles has never been to a world championships where she didn't come out on top with the gold medal. She's got five of them now. The thing about it is the margin of victory keeps growing. Unbelievable gymnastics. And this was her gold medal from yesterday on the vault. Another title. It's it's awesome. So that makes 23. She admitted she had lost count at some point, but she's tied at the top, male or female. With Vitaly Sherbo, so today an opportunity to get numbers 24 and number 25, I'd say pretty good chance. Pretty good chance. I think she's going to do both of them very well. The balance beam always a little nerve wracking, but if anybody can perform well under pressure, it is Simone Biles. She has proved that not only here all week long, but throughout her entire career. And on floor exercise, she is just off the chart. She has that triple double, of course. She can do a double twisting, double layout. She has so many different options that she can do in floor exercise. If she hits her routine, there's nobody that can come close. She's not the only American in competition this afternoon. Kara Aker initially did not qualify for this beam final, but she will be here competing. We'll explain that. Suni Lee won an individual medal her first at the World Championships yesterday. She'll be on floor exercise. And Sam McCulloch, who won a medal on high bar last year, will be the last man to go in that event later on. So it is day two, five different events, and we get started on the men's vault. Young Hak Sun from South Korea, the Olympic gold medalist back in 2012. Artavilov, Dalaloyan, who's played a large role. Trangulescu, Gorney also the men's all-around gold. Check Cunningham and Lee. So the final day of competition. You're going to miss this place. I think Tim's paying taxes <laughs> here now. He's been here so long. I mentioned this man, 26 years of age from Guangzhou, South Korea, two-time world champ and Olympic gold. This is his own vault. He originated triple twist. Oh. Unbelievable. So he disappointing, is. qualified into this final in first place. Was the 2012 Olympic gold medalist on this. As you mentioned, Terry. Had a string of injuries, hamstring, Achilles kept him out of Rio, but has made his way back. And I saw him in a recent competition do this vault perfectly with no landing deduction whatsoever. And that is a full point off. And now has to get set for his second ball after having that happen to him. Yeah, the hamstring right after that Olympic gold medal. See the number 13.733, the Achilles. Another hamstring, a right hand that was broken too. So it's been really tough since the London Games. He really needed that first vault though. It was the highest potential score. 
We'll do a slightly, slightly easier vault right here. Gorgeous. Beautiful form in the air. Very surprising. Very surprising. He is, when healthy, very consistent. This is actually a triple twist going backwards. As I said, his first vault bears his name in the rule book, the code of points. And so many athletes struggle finishing the twist all the way around, but take a look at his arms right here. They almost open up and he kicks out. Just done so well. We talk about how long this week can be. If you are a specialist, if this is what you're pointing at, and you wait all that time, and then that's what happens on your first ball. Yeah, and, and you know, and on the contrary, we've talked about these athletes that have literally gone back to back to back, competing all around so many times in a row, and, and that's obviously mentally and physically exhausting. But Terry, as you mentioned, some of these athletes compete on the very first day of competition over a week ago, yeah. and now this very last day. Yeah. So he sits and what, what do we come up with? Sit and score? The area? Sit and score. That's the best yeah, we got. Yeah, yeah we we'll have to go with that. 14.316. So that is the standard number wise that is set. That would not have even put him into the event finals, Terry. So if everybody else does what they're capable of doing, and it's not a given because the level of difficulty that you're going to see is just spectacular here. Now to the 26-year-old from Ukraine, Igor Radovilov, who won an Olympic bronze medal in 2012 and also a couple of world silver medals on vault. Typically does a handspring forward-facing vault first. He'll flip his body three times around at the very end, try to spot the floor and squeak a half turn in. Wow. Not bad. <laughs> That's actually called a Dragulescu, named after the famous Marian Dragulescu from Romania, who has so many titles of his own. He'll be competing in these finals, which means he has earned his spot to Tokyo. Just a small, little, tiny hop on the landing. He actually. Believe it or not, in Rio, attempted a vault in the finals where he did one more flip than that, four times around. Didn't make it all the way to his feet. Basically, the vault is now barred, and I think it's a very good thing because mm. just so dangerous. Everybody in the world knew he was planning on doing it. All the experts, coaches, gymnasts, watching so closely and it was it was hard to even watch he made say, it or around or maybe not watching yeah significantly better than his qualifying score 14.833 for that first one and you saw that execution score 9.233 for the first one We'll do a second vault here, same level of difficulty, but different family vault, so he'll enter the vault differently. He'll do a half turn onto the table. It's called a Sukahara, but he adds another flip in the piked position, leg straight. Really good. Really, really good. <laughs> Would you rather go early in this final and set a standard or? You know, I, I always liked going early. I know a lot of people say that it's always better to go later in the final. Sometimes the judges warm up a little bit more, throw out higher scores. But I just liked getting it over with. Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of knew, you know, that you do what you can do. You do your best routine. And unfortunately, it's up to the judges anyways. So for me, it didn't really matter when I was up. But this is extremely difficult. So take a look at his shoulders pretty low down. The judges are looking for your chest and your shoulders be a little bit higher on that landing. From board to landing, once again, that's three times around. Triple flip. 
But it's been a great World Championships for Team Ukraine here, qualifying to the Olympic Games. His teammate Oleg Vernayev won that bronze medal in the all-around competition. No one expected no. that. <laughs> and he reminded people that no one did on social media. He absolutely media. did. Yeah. I don't think he expected it either, to be perfectly honest. He will be far more of a factor and challenge the top spot, I'm sure. Has had a lot of surgeries, injuries himself. So, the number for the second vault, 14, 7, 4, 9 into first. So for that second vault, he, the execution score was actually a 9.066. We saw this a little bit yesterday on our screen. It would really just show the execution for the first vault, and we were a little confused for a while. Taking the host <laughs> broadcaster's pictures and information here, so pay no attention on the second vault to the execution. All right, here is one of the stars. Well, he emerged last year. Now he is just an established star. Artur Deloyan from Russia. And he's capable of doing a super hard vault. Handspring double pike forward with a half turn. He didn't do it. Nope, not doing that one. Your Chenko twi triple twist. He's trying to make out the vaulting number and didn't see it. That was very nicely done. This vault, it's very easy to stay cleaner on a Yurchenko-style vault. That foot was dangerously close to touching blue over the white line. Let's look if we get, no, we can't see that there. Very few athletes are able to successfully complete this vault time and time again. It's really tricky. Sometimes you get a little amped up and you miss your block. It's part of that team goal, that thrilling win for Russia. If you weren't with us, they hadn't won since the days of the Soviet Union. It broke through, but Tanaloyan Came up just short, won the silver in the all-around. Nikita Nagorny won the gold, and Artur was fourth on floor exercise yesterday in the final. The yeah. reason I thought he was going to do that other vault was I was looking at the scoreboard, and it had a 6.0 difficulty value, which would have meant he would do a handspring double pike with an extra half turn. It's now gone. And it says 5.6, so that would just be a handspring double pike, but who knows at this point. Really great. And you know, this vault is what really cost him yep. the chance to challenge his teammate and friend, Nikita Nagorny. He basically squatted down almost sat and lost more than a full point on his landing. This will be just a three-tenths over does this in the, one. In the all-around final. Yes. So that, that fault is just so incredibly difficult, yet they perform and, and make it look so easy. He does train this with a half turn at the end and absolutely could have done it right there. But you know, as we've talked about, it's just been such a long week for so many of these athletes and vaults like that or some certain skills when you're trying something new and, and you're, you, you can feel in your body you're not quite the level of energy maybe and, and maybe even a little mentally, sometimes it's better to just still do the difficult vault, but not as difficult as you're capable of. <laughs> right there with him. He loved weights, but he'll move now because it's Dalloyan with a 14.933 overall who goes into the top spot. And we'll see his good friend Nagorny in a couple of minutes. But first to the 38-year-old veteran, Marian Dragulescu from Romania, who has won 10 medals at the World Championships, including four gold in vault. And he's a medalist in the Olympics as well. He has been around. And so he will do the same vault we saw 
Radovilov do a handspring double front with a half, but it's extra special for him because it's called a Dragolesco, named after him. Oh, oh. hello. Wow. He just wanted to remind everybody in case, you know, we all forgot that this is his skill. He's going to show us how to do it. That was a different level, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. And sticks the landing. Last year, I saw him trying to do this vault, and it just, it just didn't look like he could still pull it off. But he is the innovator of that. I'll tell you, very early on in his career, he was doing an American Cup in the United States, and I was standing near the vaulting table, and when he hit the board, I was, I was shocked. I thought a gun had gone off. He creates so much force <laughs> into the board. Just put this in perspective for a moment. Again, he's 38 years old. His last world title on vault was 10 years ago, in 2009. Wow. And he brings that. In that number. Incredible. And the second vault he's actually doing is two tenths higher in starting value, maximum score of a 15.8. Really complicated. He'll do a round off or a half turn onto the board, then another half turn onto the table, do a laid out somersault off, and try to squeeze in two and a half twists. Stepped out of bounds the first day. Let's see if he can do it better here today. And he does not. He only does a double twist. I believe he was planning on doing a two and a half right there. It just seemed like he missed the block off the table a little bit. Didn't quite explode off of the horse. Very good decision right there, but and that landing is well, it was very dangerous, first of all, but also controversial. You have to complete the twist. Let's see where his body is. And I would say that that wasn't even three quarters of a twist with his entire body. That would mean that they would downgrade it even further. Every half turn on vault is worth another four tenths. So that could conceivably be eight tenths less than he was hoping to do. Qualified sixth, 14.624 was the number to get here. First one much higher, but how about when you go with the second one, 14.283. So yeah, into third place after that spectacular first one. Yeah, but just, you know, making the event finals, if because there are only three athletes from teams that have not qualified, that punches his ticket, and he has qualified for another Olympic Games. Our next competitor Here is the all-around champ from these world championships, Nikita. team gold medal as well for Russia, Nikita Nagorny, sixth yesterday on floor. We saw Marian Dragulescu stick this vault, the Dragulescu, he can do it. He's done it here. Actually has a little more power. <laughs> Unbelievable. Come on. I'm pretty sure that's three for three. Oh. It, I tell you what, though. The thing that is so amazing about Nikita, this was not his best vault. He did not get the same rebound. Kind of tucked a little bit early. But he is still able to know exactly where his body is, put his feet in the exact spot underneath him. I, I bet he's at least a foot lower than he was in the all-around final on that vault. And a little worse in that landing position, his shoulders and chest down a little bit, but it, it was a stuck landing. Stuck landing, but more tape. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Landing looked like it probably hurt a little bit more. Oh my gosh, the forces that go into that vault. Landing straight up and down hurts. 14-9-3-3. So once again, in the vault finals, you have to do two 
vaults, but they also have to be very different. He did a handspring vault onto the table, Second facing forwards. He will now do a turn onto the table from the board. Qualified into this final in seventh place, but top really eight all within three or four tenths of a point. Don't ever count this guy out. Double pike. Oh, baby. Wow. <laughs> what a week. I don't know. Him. What a week indeed for that man. You know, at last Worlds, his teammate and good friend, Arthur Dalaloyan, kind of dominated, won a whole bunch of things. Nikita had to settle for a bronze in the all around. But this vault, combined with a stuck first one, that's a tenth of a point hop only. If it's more than shoulder width apart, it would be three tenths off. From the way they've ju been judging, I would say that will just put him slightly ahead of Dalaloyan. Yes, he's got his chest down a little bit, but... It's great watching these two in the team final because Nagorni went last, Dalaloyan said, I let out a scream when he finished. I didn't realize I was screaming. I was so excited. 14, 9, 6, 6. So Nagorni is able to edge him off that top spot. It was wow. close, though. Wow. And they're friendly, but they obviously both want to win a gold medal. Shek Wai Hong, the 28-year-old from Hong Kong, is next. His eighth World Championships. He was sixth on vault last year at Worlds, and he qualified third. He does two really, really hard vaults. Just incredible difficulty, higher than we've seen. Oh, boy. Oh. And that is such a shame. I saw him training this early on in the Worlds before anything had even started. I couldn't believe the power he was getting. This is a Sukahara double back with a full twist and he opens his body way too early. I, I cannot fathom that he can do another vault after landing like that. Oh, look at the reaction. Yeah. As he knows. I mean, it, I, if I landed like that, I would, I would have broken many things. And if I didn't, I wouldn't have been able to walk for weeks. Let I mean, alone do another ball. I, 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 I don't know how it's possible. Well, and you know, not, not by any means am I saying that you should give up and not do this ball. But when you're in that much pain, I just really hope that he doesn't do the vault that he was planning on doing which is another backward landing vault, a handspring, double pike with a half turn. It says 6.0, 16 maximum score. Oh. Oh! That's some heart right there. Wow. Just to do it and then to actually do it. Check why Hong get his numbers, but he's glad he's done now. So it is the all-around gold medalist, Nikita Nagorny of Russia. Now the leader in the vault competition takes his teammate and good friend, Artur Dalaloyan, out of that top spot. Sit and score. Yep, we're going to stick with that. Check my hung, wait for the number 14, 4, 6, 6 into fifth place. So it's Nikita Nagorny who still leads over Artur Delaloyan. Here's the 23 year old from Vietnam, Leighton Tong. 
competing in his six world championships. First time he's made it to a final, and it's a big deal. Really nicely done. A handspring laid out somersault with two and a half twists. Maybe doesn't look as spectacular and high flying as what we saw from some of the other athletes, but a very high starting score, 15.6, the same score that Nagorni, the leader, had on both of his vaults. So just take a look at the legs, just a little, not completely bent, just soft. Not as precise as some of the other execution scores that we have seen. It's a good job for him, though. You he, was, know. he was 30th in the vault qualification last year. He makes it to the final, and the way the numbers shake out, it means that he's going to Tokyo. So he will just be the fourth gymnast from Vietnam to compete at the Olympics. The thing he has going against him on this vault, at least in the preliminaries, he did a lower-valued vault, four-tenths of a point lower than the folks at the top of the board are doing, and that is what he has displayed on a screen. So, 15.2 maximum score. Nicely done, very clean, but not enough juice to factor in. Nikita Nagorni wins his third gold medal at these World Championships. And another one-two finish for Russia. They're gonna remember Stuttgart, this city. World's being held here for the third time, and Russia has done oh so well. Nice vault. Kasamatsu with one and a half. It's actually two and a half twists off the table. I'm sure he trains a triple twist, which would give him the same value as the top vaulters were doing. It's just the knees throughout, you know, that's the thing. Actually moved to China when he was young, trained there for a number of years. Was very homesick, said he had to go back. He returned when he was 16 years old. So it should be a formality, but they're waiting. Corny, Delaloyan, Radovilov, and 14.533 into sixth place for Leitan Tong. So it is Nikita Nagorni who captures the gold medal. Add another one to the list, and Russia does go one two. Artur Delaloyan, the silver. Igor Radovilov captures the bronze as we continue, and it's Simone Biles and the women next on B. We go to the beam now. Simone Biles getting ready. Parents Ron and Nelly waiting to celebrate. Pretty much everybody recognizes her as the best ever. More and more as we join Andrea Joyce. Terry, Simone has told us that she does not like to be called a superstar, but that does not change the fact that some of the most famous people in the world are talking about her a lot. Simone is all over social media. At Nationals last August, after Simone landed her two new historic skills on floor and beam, Michelle Obama raved about her on Twitter. Then, this week, it was LeBron James tweeting, Simone, you are flat out incredible. But we think the best and most meaningful reactions have come from those closest to her. Boyfriend Stacey Irvin watching on TV back home could barely contain his excitement. And I checked in with Simone's dad, Ron, here in Germany. Yes, he still counts on those hit routines to get a kiss from Simone's mom, Nelly. So, Terry, I guess you'd say that Simone takes the gold in the Cupid department as well. That celebratory kiss, waiting for another one at the end of this. Here's the start list on beam, and we put in the qualification rank as well. Nishi Jia from China leads it off. Matarirayu from Canada, all the way down to Kara Aker, who initially didn't make it. She was 10th, but the three athlete per country rule, plus Ellie Black withdrawing from this final, she gets in. It's an even deeper story to tell there, too, which we will. Simone Biles. Qualified 
number one. And then Flavia Sariva from Brazil will round out the field here on B. Well, talk about Simone making history, and it did start in the qualification. Uh, right here, double twisting, double back. Nobody in the entire world has ever done that. Now goes down in the code of points as the Biles. Two flips, there's a twist, there's another twist. As you said, Nastia, never been done, but there's been a lot of controversy here at these World Championships. It was only given one-tenth higher of a difficulty value than a full twisting double, which makes no logical sense. USA Gymnastics appealed. FIG came back and said it is a safety issue, but it's not right. All right, starting off with the 15 year old from China, Li Shi Jia, who qualified second. And China had a really a disastrous team competition. Finishing off the podium, Italy upset them, and already two pretty big balance checks. Supposed to connect all three of those elements. This is big here. Awesome. Gorgeous. Relatively new combination that is earning favor with a lot of gymnasts. Gets good points for it and also very exciting. That handspring front. You saw she qualified into this final in second place, just behind Simone, three tenths of a point. So you heard that tone. That means she has 10 seconds to complete her routine. If she doesn't, she'll incur another deduction. And she... Great dismount, double pike, but she is over time by one second, so an additional one tenth off. Entered the World Championships as a 15 year old. Turned 16 during the competition. Lishi Chia. Here's that connection. So she was trying to connect these two leaps together into a backhand spring. So three elements in a row she was supposed to connect. So she broke two of those connections. And you Plus know, a slight wobble, so. Right, and, and you know, you say, well, why would you have a routine that is too long? You would make it the right amount of time. She would have easily done that if she had connected those skills. She had two pauses in between then. Probably cost her at least three, if not four or five seconds. There's that dismount, so double back flip in a pike position, shoulders up on the landing. That's what the judges are looking for. Obviously that that stick, but the position in your chest and shoulders when you your feet hit the mat. Just in case you're wondering, the music during that beam routine was very loud. That is not choreographed, that's just <laughs> nat sound in the arena. At times it's been uh, a little bit like a disco in here. Commentators are very close together too. That gets loud at times. <laughs> it does. Our it does. I've, I've over heard. Here? I've heard that some people have had a problem. Oh, have you? <laughs> Sound problems, taxi problems. There are a few, but it's been a great week. Other than that, it's just such a shame, though, because the Chinese, all of them, are so unbelievably fabulous on beam, but they don't get the job done. You see that penalty of one-tenth of a point? That is for the overtime. So 14.3 is the number as Anna Adarerayu from Canada gets set, the 17-year-old who won a silver medal on beam at the World Championships last year. And her teammate, Ellie Black, who had a fantastic world, was fourth in the all-around on her last event. Oh, boy. Ooh.
And that may not look difficult, but those turns, they're called wolf turns, they can be the demise of just about anyone. Started to say Ellie Black injured herself on vaulting, high ankle sprain, had to withdraw from the finals, so she got a second chance. Beautiful combination, but looking very rattled. I thought she was very off right after the first layout step out and not rotated enough. Yeah, didn't quite just get the rotation that you need. Obviously, she was a little crooked, but sometimes you're able to fix that in the air if you have enough height and rotation and just wasn't able to pull it off. You know, Tim, you, you talk about the music that you hear right now in the background. <laughs> That's just very not typical because normally there are three other events going right. on at once in the event finals. It really is one event, one athlete at a time. You feel a little bit more pressure when you know yep. all eyes are on you. Two and a half, two double full right there. That's a shame, two falls, a point off for each one. That is a different dynamic in an event final. But then you take a Simone Biles who knows all eyes are on her. Always, anytime. exactly. The dreaded wolf turn where she's down low to the beam, tries to spin around three times and off the balance beam. In training, I was watching, you know, before everything really even got going here and a number of athletes, oh yeah, way off to the side right Just there. Didn't quite open her hips up in the air, that would have given her some more rotation. And, and it seemed like that first skill was pretty straight, but really it was after the second one going into the third. This is a rule they, they gotta modify, you know. The, I agree with you. On the women's side, they allow a seat level dismount, whereas in the past it would be a deduction. You would lose bonus points, and it just doesn't encourage so exciting every, stuff and what she's capable of doing. Yeah, absolutely. So as you mentioned, the seat the seat dismount. Every single skill and on every event has a different grade of difficulty, starting with an A, going all the way up, but. And each letter that you go up, it's another 10th. A is one, B is two, all the way on up to Simone's double, double off beam that is an H. Which should be higher. <laughs> it should be a J. So sub 12 for Mother Rare Ryu from Canada. Home crowd getting it going for Sarah Voss, the 19 year old. Combination series right there. Three skills in a row. Oh. There you go. A lot of times the leaps don't look as difficult, but they can be, and sometimes even more difficult. I would not give that, though, too long of a pause. She's trying to get some extra tense of a point by combining elements together. Dismount right here. So nice two and a half twist, big hop, but as we mentioned, that dismount right there, a D level of difficulty. So a little bit di more difficult than the last. Despite dealing with a foot injury, she got to the all around finish camp and helped Germany qualify for the Tokyo Olympics. Sarah Voss.
Tara Voss into second place, 13.266, as Melanie De Jesus Dos Santos from France is underway on beam. Gorgeous. And, and, and Melanie is just such a phenomenal athlete, has struggled a little bit here. A few falls. Was really vying for that all around podium, unfortunately, just did not have a great day. Multiple falls. And the entire delegation of France, a lot of people had them in the hunt with Italy for an outside shot at a team bronze, but just didn't happen during the team finals. Just a beautiful gymnast. Double tuck. There you go. No one likes to finish a competition on a bad note, and it wasn't good for her the last time out in the all-around finals. Qualified for both beam and floor, so we'll see her a couple of times today. Melanie De Jesus Dos Santos. Beautiful back layout, her hips pretty open, looking for all the way around. Could have just gone just a little bit more for being extra picky. Got to be friends with Simone Biles, actually has spent time at her training camp, Biles Gym. Saw the other day, Simone watching closely and cheering her on. As you mentioned, Tim, just such a beautiful gymnast and kind of has it all, the grace, the beauty, flexibility, but the power and the strength as well. Yeah, she does, and that's a rare combination. You know, a lot of times you can be really elegant and, you know, have this artistic feel for the sport and usually maybe not quite as powerful. She has everything. Lee's number is 14.3. That's what she would need to take the top spot. Boss in second right now. It's a contingent from France. Yeah, she was fifth and sixth in the all-around the last couple of years, so it was really disappointing that performance in that final. 13.662, so a long way from Lee's number into second. Actually, she got a 15.2 maximum starting score and in well, the qualifications, well. yeah, she had a 15.7. What happens is the judges evaluate what they see, now what the gymnasts were planning to do. All right, here is the reigning world balance beam champ, 19-year-old Liu Ting Ting from China. And really wants to redeem herself in the team finals. Two falls on bars, then went to beam, fell again. She said, I'm a veteran. That is unacceptable. I shouldn't have let it get to me like that. Here we go. Hangs on. Carry that routine that she won the gold medal last year at Worlds. It was absolute poetry in motion. Just gorgeous everything. But you see all these little doubts, I think, Nastia. Yeah, she doesn't really seem like she's off. And that was, that was great. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, it's about being patient, not rushing to finish and move on to that next skill. She qualified into this final in third place, was, oh, mm -hmm. broke that connection right there. She was about to say she was over time. 
So let's listen. So that's your warning. So now she has 10 seconds. I think she's going to make it. She does. Double full. The clock says one minute, 28 seconds. So she finished with no time deduction. It was a very good routine, absolutely. But she's capable of better. She had a couple of balance checks. You pointed out Nastia at the end. She didn't connect something. Really difficult combination going two forward elements in a row. That was gorgeous right there. That's called a ring leap. And so many gymnasts at this competition have been just really brutalized. They think they're getting a certain le level of skill and they don't give it. The judges don't. There it is right there once again. There's that dismount, so just a double full here. And really, when you're doing a, a dismount that's, you know, a C-level difficulty, so not as difficult as so many, you cannot give away a single tenth. But see, that, that's why I think the FIG made a mistake with that. It just, you know, it historically has not been allowed. She would have, you know, incurred deductions on top of that, and she's capable of doing more. Thirteen nine six six. So you see, they actually raised her yeah, difficulty went, score by a few tenths. Goes back, and we're going to talk more about that in a moment too, because the next gymnast who is set to go, Liu, qualified third, right behind Li, who is the leader, and then Chen Yi La from China qualified fourth. So she's not here. Two athletes per country, and that tops it. Fourteen point four three three on top of the leaderboard. Two athletes from China, one, two right now. And Kara Aker is next, the 16-year-old from Grain Valley, Missouri. Told you that the two athlete per country rule, also Allie Black withdrawing, so she gets in, but there's even more drama back to the qualification as she gets underway. Gorgeous, she keeps her beam moving, but what happened was, she competed and they only gave her a starting score of 15.8. The USA coaches thought that was too low. They put in an inquiry and they came back, lowered it by four tenths of a point. They have spoken with officials and judges here. They don't agree with it, but they're making some modifications to this routine to try to alleviate that. Well, you know, I think the most Wow, beautiful. The most upsetting part about it was that the USA was in the last round of qualifying in, in mm. the competition, and she was basically already guaranteed a spot yep. before they put in that inquiry. Yeah, she was in, then out after the inquiry, and then, of course, Ellie Black, scratching from balance beam, moved her up, and she gets her shot again. What a range of emotions. <laughs> Great nice. connection right there. Nicely A little done. off on her switch leap, mm -hmm. but didn't seem to bother her. And two and a half twists right here. She'll actually add a back handspring. Round of back handspring, two and a half. Pretty darn good. Advanced to the beam final last year and also a second on beam in the U.S. National Championships the last couple of seasons. So it's going to be really interesting to see what the judges value this routine as. Once again, in qualifying, 15.8, then lower to 15.4. In the team championships, though, she did a routine that was 16.0. And in the US and at the Pan American Games, had a routine that was valued at 16.6.
has long been known for her tremendous abilities on balance beam, but really wants to be considered. Wow, she was very crooked. Wow. <laughs> but that's what the great ones do. You know, they're they're presented a challenge and they don't they don't fade. They they keep it going. And she did because wow, she could have been completely off on that either the round off or the back handspring. Kara, who was born in China, and it's a gymnast from China sitting alongside in the lead right now. So we get the number for Kara Aker, and then it's Simone Biles going after medal number 24 and gold medal number 18. Get the number now for Kara Aker of the U.S. as it's Liu Ting Ting who's on top and even 14, so into third. And a 15-9 start value. And now Simone Biles on beam. Already had the record for gold medals coming in. That number's up to 17 at the World Championships now. That really tricky skill. You don't see Simone struggle on that too often. Big test right here, three elements in a row. Back handspring to two layouts. Perfect. Wow. You know, she was very upset with her performance in Rio on balance beam. Certainly thought she could come away with a gold medal. We've heard her say outside of the competition hall that if there's one medal she wants most in Tokyo, it is a gold on balance beam. But you heard from her coach that... To her coach right before. She will not be doing the double twisting double back here. Just a full in. She doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> she probably doesn't need to do it. It's a shame though. If it was valued at the right level. And here's that wolf turn that, not always my favorite, but the way she does it is just perfection. You see a lot of gymnasts that struggle to make it around and she is like. Cut out a few more. Warp <laughs> speed. Fantastic right there. And here's that connection. I mean, even in slow motion, it just looks so quick. That's exactly what the judges are looking for. So she had a 16.5 maximum score in qualification, but she did the double-double, which gave her only one tenth. Oh, oh it tears. <laughs> what must that be like? <laughs> it's got to be on top here. It's just... Two-time world champ already on beam. Will she be a three-time champ? Get her 24th medal. You, that's happening overall and 18th gold. She'll become the most decorated world champion gymnast, male or female, surpassing the great Vitaly Sherbo. They've got to give it to her. And they do, 15.066 on top is Biles. Number one again. And that will be hard to challenge, that's for sure. And we knew it, but that is medal number 24. Nobody, no male, no female has ever had 24 medals at the World Championships. Unbelievable, just I incredible. So one more gymnast to go. Flavia Sariva, the 20 year old from Brazil. Brazil just unfortunately had such a devastating round of qualifications. Oh, oh boy. And she though has been fantastic at these world championships. 
as I was saying, they unfortunately didn't qualify their team to the Olympic Games. Flavia herself earned an individual spot in the all-around. They lost an athlete to injury while they were here, and really their top all-around gymnast tore her ACL again. I think she has three of them, Rebecca Andragi. She is hoping to make a comeback and qualify through what's called the Continental Championships in the all-around. Just such a stunning routine here, yeah. <laughs> minus that first fall. You know, we talk about those bring leaps so often, and Flavia does them so well. There's one right there. You see her head goes all the way back, looking up past the ceiling. And so that means they lose sight of the balance beam, <laughs> which you don't really you never like want to do. Scary. <laughs> it's just the dismount. Double pike. Uh, such a shame. Such yeah. a great routine for her. It was great. She's got one more shot, though. She is also in the floor exercise finals. But up until that fall on that super hard, super gorgeous layout from a round off, she has been phenomenal. Here's Here. That fall you see on her round off, her feet were already almost off the beam there. And unfortunately, just no matter how high or how much rotation she had, she wasn't able to save that one. But this was gorgeous. Same combination we saw Simone Biles do. Perfect. I mean, literally perfect. Like to see the double pike, pretty good body position on the landing, the smallest of steps, only a tenth of a point for that. Disappointing week, though. Simone waits for that number for the final gymnast, Sariva from Rio de Janeiro. So Simone is going to be about six tenths better than the second place gymnast. And she's like that on so many events, it's scary. She was talking about the fact that she kind of wished there was someone there challenging her at this point. The one person that comes closest didn't have a, a great all-around meet, and that's her teammate, the 16-year-old Suni Lee. I used to say Simone can fall for sure two times, three, maybe even four. With someone like Suni, if she hits, I don't think that's the case. 13.4 into sixth place, so now it is really official. Another gold medal. It's the fourth here in Stuttgart at these World Championships for Simone Biles. Liu Ting Ting from China, the silver, and Li Shi Jia, the bronze medal. So a couple of athletes from China on the podium, but that top step belongs to Simone Biles. Kara Aker almost didn't make it into this final, ends up in fourth. So the 24th medal at the World Championships, 18 gold medals now for Simone. And she is not done yet. A little bit later, we will see her try to capture gold on floor. Gets it done on beam. Add another one to the collection for the greatest gymnast of all time. With a reminder, beginning July 24, 2020, the Olympic Games return live from Tokyo on NBC. Ariaki Gymnastics Center being built. Eco-friendly, going to host the gymnastics, rhythmic gymnastics, trampoline about 12,000 people, including us and the top names who are competing this week in Stuttgart. Time for that medal ceremony for the balance beam. Happy for her that she gets an individual medal. In first really place, the leader of the Chinese of the team and was and so champion, upset with herself. Representing the United States of America. Auf dem ersten Platz, Gewinnerin der Goldmedaille und Weltmeisterin 2019 am Schwebebalken für die Vereinigten Staaten von Amerika, Simone Biles.
For the 18th time in her career, she steps up to that top step for the gold medal ceremony. 18 gold medals. Wow. These numbers, we talked about 18 gold, 24 medals, goes for number 25 and number 19 a little bit later. Anybody ever going to reach that? No. I, I, can't, I really don't think so. I can't uh, imagine that it could ever happen again, you know. I, but, you know, when you say 18 gold medals and you say 24 world medals, it, it's not the just that she's got those titles. She won that event Andreanova, by over a half of, of a FIG point, yeah. which she doesn't just win Zimmer the gold. She she dominates. I think she's the most dominant athlete in the world. And not to mention, she the didn't even do her most <laughs> difficult routine, that dismount, the Biles. Opted for the easier dismount today and was still that far above. But she said at one point this week that maybe more lasting in her mind will be those that are named after her, not necessarily the number of medals or wins. Absolutely, and because that is, that is what will be in the code of books forever. A hundred years from now, however many years from now, it, you know, to be able to go out there and say you're performing your own skill. It's pretty cool. You know, it's pretty cool. It is. Yeah, her great, great grandchildren, if they're doing gymnastics, they'll aspire to someday be able to do a Biles, and right. it'll still be very relevant. So two gymnasts from China up there with her. But it will be the American national anthem that is played once again here in Germany for Simone Biles. Ladies and gentlemen, in honor to the winner, the national anthem of the United States of America. Meine Damen und Herren, zu Ehren der Siegerin hören Sie nun die Nationalhymne der Vereinigten Staaten von Amerika. Two apparatus finals, two in the books, three events to come, including the floor exercise for the women. We'll see Simone Biles once again, and Suni Lee, and Sam McCulloch on high bar. In fact, he'll be the last one to go in that final. Also, we'll see Artur Dalaloyan also try to get another medal for him and for Russia. Terry Gannon, Nastia Luke, and Tim Daggett, and Andrea Joyce as we check out the start list now for the men's parallel bar final. Soon Wei from China kicks it off. I think that jumps out to you here. You got a couple of gymnasts, Tim, from Turkey in the final. Yes, you do. And you got to remember these worlds qualify people to the Olympic Games. Arachan already has a spot because of his all around placement, but Onder 
gets one because he is in the finals and you take out all, all the other teams that have qualified as a team to Tokyo. So three gymnasts. Yesterday they won the still rings with Cholak. Pretty impressive. Dumakaya, part of that strong Japanese team. And Xiaoru Tong really looking for a, a positive ending to these world championships. It's been disappointing. Yeah, it really has. And, you know, he took a major risk. There is no question about it. He was the 2017 all-around winner at Worlds. 2018, he had the exact same score. They tied, but Dalaloyan won the tiebreaker. This time he knew he had to catch Nikita Nagorny, who was out in front at that point in time. He added in a combination that he typically doesn't do. Had a mistake and knocked himself off the podium and gave Oleg Vernayev his first world all-around medal. A complicated preparation of the bars, Nastia, we've talked about. Yeah, you know, we saw that in the uneven bars. Every single athlete likes the bars a certain way. All right, China, the gold medal as a team last year, but came up short, and this man had some mistakes down the stretch there. Soon Wei, 24-year-old. Yeah, the last event on high bar came off on a release, took them completely out of the race with Russia. But he is so gorgeous. Just such an elegant gymnast. His toes go to a point. Nice release skill there. Should show more of an open body, though. Another one right here, way above the bars. This is called a Bopsar. He'll travel from one end to the other. Just gorgeous. Absolutely no glaring errors whatsoever. Until right there. Jinx time the announcer time. cursed. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be at least three-tenths of a point, probably more. Double front, half twist. Hop on the landing, but early on in his career, always a gorgeous gymnast, but so inconsistent. Kind of, kind of had his breakout year last year, being part of that gold medal winning team at Worlds, was fourth in the all-round one spot away from the podium. Great height. And here is where he had a problem. Just kind of fumbled his hands a little bit. And as he was reaching for the bar, you have to keep your shoulders back. He pulls his shoulders forward, which is a technical error that he doesn't typically do. Shoulders and chest down pretty far. Looked like he was thinking he was going to have a little more rotation, was going for the stick, but unfortunately wasn't able to do that. That fourth place finish in the all-around last year at the World Championships. He was one lower this time around. He was fifth and had to settle for that silver in the team. He has always said, my main rival is myself. I believe he was talking about his ability to lose focus and maybe make some mistakes that he shouldn't. Yeah, 14.8 in the qualifying. It's 14.466 here in the that final. That kind of score would have left him out of this final. So on to the next gymnast here on parallel now, bars. Ahmet Ander, the 23-year-old, given Turkey a presence here and eventually in Tokyo at the Olympics. Very nice all-around gymnast that did not perform to his capabilities. Very difficult, done excellent. So hard to do that under bar swing to one bar and then Healy down out of it. Release right here, nicely done. A lot of people thought Turkey had a shot to jump in to the top 12 and qualify a full team. They did not.
but just by this peril of our routine, this will be the third Turkish gymnast to go to Tokyo. Get the number for Ahmed on there as we continue day two of the apparatus finals here in Stuttgart. Shun Wei is the leader. Ahmed on there from Turkey looking to take the lead, and he just did. 14-9-8-3, the number. Well deserved. A young athlete on the men's side has a very, very positive future. Young athlete here, 22 years of age, Kazuma Kaya, who has had an active week and at the age of 22, an active career already. He's in the World Championships back in 2015. Qualified eighth, 14.8, the number there. And really, one of the team leaders for Japan said this on earlier broadcasts, but they are without their two main stars, Kohei Uchimura, many consider the greatest of all time, and Kenzo Shirai, multiple medals at vaulting and floor exercise at the world level, both of them dealing with injuries this year. A young team had to step up. Yeah, it's a little strange not seeing them here at a world championships, hoping they recover by the Olympic Games. But Japan, you know, obviously they were the Olympic champions for the team. In 2018, they were way behind both China and Russia. They organized a joint training camp in both Beijing and Tokyo with the Chinese to try to zone in on what they're doing. That was a great exercise. I, I've said it throughout the competition because it's the most definitive thing about him. He is so, he is so reliable, always. <laughs> is that one that could be in play for the goal? You know, I think we're, we've got some other routines that have a little bit more punch to them. Slightly higher maximum score, but. But you know, as we've kind of seen the entire event finals it really has come down to just a few tenths of a point both in the qualifying round and on top of the podium and of course he had the big dismount with the stick nice transition there are other guys that fly a little higher than that Japan ended up with the bronze here in the team, but was over two and a half points behind China, and that is not a comfortable position for them. They wanted to cut that threshold from the 2018 World Championships and did not. You heard the number, 14983 to beat. If I was a coach, I'd want this guy on my team. In the second place, look at the look on his face. <laughs> I think it confused him for a yeah. moment. <laughs> Celebration started and then stopped dramatically. Well, he's still in there for sure for a medal, but yeah. I, I'm glad they did what they did there Our on dare, just a little classier in my Joe book. Fraser. One of the up-and-coming gymnasts, 20 years of age, from Birmingham, England, Joe Fraser, who said he upgraded his parallel bars routine prior to the 2019 Worlds to make it as difficult as he could. Yeah, and he has the highest level of difficulty on this event in the whole competition. Nice peach work. He'll 
do a very gorgeous giant to one bar. Now watch this, one of the few people that's ever done this skill. Oh. And there it is. Adds an extra flip to it, but he's got one more. Right here, a peach to a backflip. Little bit wonky. Good kick out at the end, but. Gorgeous lines. Makes gymnastics look easy. Double front half. Mm. Big step on the landing. But he comes to the table with basically three and sometimes four tenths more of a start over some of the other athletes that we have seen. Maximum score again of a 16.6. Really hard to do that giant and then freeze it on one bar and the full spin or a heely down. Very challenging. Watch this though. <laughs> a lot of guys do this with one half less flip. He tucks it all the way around. This routine is is pounding yeah, on his body. You see the pads on his arms. I'm just thinking about the first time that you actually try this skill. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought that you often know. about a number of these. But this right here, he opens the door. I would say that's a three tenth step and chest way down on the landing. But he went for it, you know, and that's that's something that so many of these athletes try to figure out in the event finals. Do you take the risk and, and go all out on your difficulty, or do you try to hit a clean, perfect routine? One of the best, giving him a high five. Xiao Ru Tung, he'll be next. What might this routine look like come Tokyo, though? Oh, my goodness. He, uh, he's fantastic everywhere. Even 15 in the first place. And you see that six? Point six, sixteen six. He did have more errors, but that start value rewarded the difficulty as they should. So it's Joe Frazier from Great Britain into the lead on parallel bars. Joe Frazier with the knockout. You're, you were waiting to say it. You never <laughs> got a chance to say down goes Frazier. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Trying to cap off what's been a disappointing week, but he can make up some for that here. Xiao Rutong. Big release coming up after these two skills. Watch what he does, though. He opens his body. You see how he kicks out his legs? So hard to do that on that particular element. Another release right here. Gorgeous kick out. So incredibly challenging to pull that off. Now he'll do his skill from one end into the middle. It's called a pelt. Double pike dismount. Little bit of a hop on the landing. You know, we talk about that difficulty, and he surely went for it in the all-around finals on that high bar routine. Unfortunately, huge mistake there. Left him off the podium. These, that skill right there, that front up rise to what's called a full spin or a diamond off, that was not finished in a handstand position. But this is great. Watch him open his body. We saw Sun Wei do that. It looked great, but he did not have that kick out. So he will come away with less deductions. And this is fabulous. Gorgeous work. But doesn't do the hard dismount. Just a double pike. This is worth only four tenths. The people that are doing the double front with a half. Considerably more difficulty. I do not see this passing. Joe Fraser right there for Great Britain. So a reminder, he got a 15.0 and the qualifying round, Chow got a 14.966. Really that one skill where he was supposed to, he went to his upper arms and then swung up 
did a full twist on it. Nope. In fourth, 14-9, 6 6. So it's Joe Frazier from Great Britain who still has the lead, a sigh of relief, but not till Shaw left. Wow. His teammate Max Whitlock grabbed the gold medal yesterday, another one on Pommel Horse. Continue with parallel bars. Joe Fraser leads it from Great Britain. Berhat Arakan. Arachan, the 26-year-old from Turkey, finished 19th in the all-around last year, but third on parallel bars at the European Championships in 2019. We'll see if he factors in. Well, he has the second highest maximum score. One tenth less than we saw from Fraser at 16.5, at least from qualification. Nicely done, right to the handstand. That's where Zhao Ratung wasn't as perfect. You see his legs come apart though? I have to tell you, a lot of times I see a routine and it's phenomenal how difficult it is, but he has little form breaks. Again, the legs came apart a little bit. Once again, there were a bunch on that skill. He seems to come out unscathed a lot of times, and it surprises me. Feet were flexed. Really hard routine, beautiful front uprise, great landing. It was awesome, but by my book, that finishes off the podium. Too many form deductions throughout. Qualified in fifth. Arachan, who wants to help kids in Turkey in terms of gymnastics, he co-founded a children's gymnastics academy already. That was last year. Another look. Really difficult, but and he takes a little extra step with his hand. Couldn't see that his legs were apart on that skill. Watch right here, though. You see the feet apart, and then feet apart, and knees bent again. I have five tenths off on that one skill. Love how he does this front uprise, though. It is picture perfect. Keeps his head up on that dismount. A lot of gymnasts duck their head, lose a lot of height and on it. At any other place besides a world or an Olympic finals, that is spectacular, stunning, but when you put it up against the very best in the world, it just, it doesn't hold its weight because of the form. And look at it, even there, his feet are flexed. I think Joe Frazier expected to be in this position at this point in the no. final. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Right? Getting more and more excited as he watches them. And those numbers go up there, and they don't catch him in the fifth, Arachan. And, you know, once again. <laughs> Another side. Look at that look. <laughs> uh, starting to get nervous now, but the current leader with only a couple up, so he's guaranteed a medal. And, and that's why he's so emotional right now. To win a world individual medal, every kid, every gymnast that's here, when they were a kid, they dreamed of that. But listen to this place, because Lucas Dowser, yes, from Germany, is next. And he's the man who qualified number one. Start. Here we go. Beautiful. That front up rise to Diamidov, and that was excellent. Has a slightly lower maximum score than 
Joe Frazier. And here is disaster. Unfortunately, going for every single handstand. We talk about that all the time, how the judges are looking for complete vertical position and just wasn't able to hold on there. Very risky skill. It's called a Makuts, Bogdan Makuts, former Soviet gymnast. He's a fixture at every major international event. But that will be a full point. He's repeating it and nice, nicely done there. <laughs> nice dismount as well. Double front half. The hop doesn't really matter because he knows he's off the podium. And Joe Frazier, at this point in time, guaranteed at least a silver. Well, the German men did do one thing, their number one priority this week, qualified for Tokyo. But even that brought drama. They were the final team qualify see members of the German Federation his teammates so disappointed there and here is that skill just a little bit too over I don't I just don't like the way a lot of gymnasts are doing this skill in the past, people used to try to keep moving and never stop on that one bar. That's the way you're supposed to do it. If you pause, it's already a three-tenth deduction. Such a shame because the start of it, those skills where he goes from his upper arms, front uprise, Diamidoff, and Stutz so hard and done so well. <laughs> Lucas really was their big hope for Germany to not just medal, but maybe even stand atop the podium and hear that national anthem. Mm. Get uncomfortable there for a moment. And some words of encouragement from the man who leads. Joe Fraser with one gymnast left on top of the standings. So Petrov Akniuk, the 27-year-old from Ukraine, who was the second qualifier, number two. And that score that he got in qualifying was higher than Joe Frazier. Starts one-tenth less. Oh, oh, but that is going to do it. He could salvage and maybe struggle in, but I don't think so. All of these gymnasts in parallel bars at such a high level. Petra was ninth in the all around here. Born in Ukraine, left to train in a different country, then came back to Ukraine. Said the opportunities weren't as good there. unfortunate but that certainly will not put him ahead of Joe two gold medals for Great Britain at these championships a lot of people here was that error you're not allowed to hit the bar like that that's gonna be just a whole bunch of deductions Great Britain came into these championships a number of their top athletes injured. Bryn Bevan and Niall Wilson, who has had surgery on his neck and problems with wrist and shoulder. 
They were able to maintain their fifth place as a team, but two gold medals for Team GB. Wow. So we get the number for Pak Nyuk, but Joe Frazier, think about how he came in, too. He said it wasn't that long ago that he would look around and see these athletes here and say, what am I doing here? I, I don't belong. I finally now feel like at least I belong. But did he feel like he could accomplish this? I, I don't think so. I mean, he dreamed about it. There's no question about that, but... 14 2 7th, and it is Joe Frazier who wins it. What a scene. <laughs> Frazier on there, Kazuma Kaya, the top three, the podium. <laughs> I'm so happy that was the result. There you see behind him, congratulating him, Max Whitlock, who just won the gold medal yesterday on the pommel horse. So those two gold medals for Great Britain, this one unexpected perhaps. Joe Fraser wins the gold on parallel bars. The World Championships continue in Stuttgart. A few moments ago on Parallel Bars, Joe Frazier, the 20-year-old. What a routine, what an accomplishment with a gold medal, Tim. Oh my goodness, you dream of this since you're a little kid, had the most difficulty, was able to outlast everybody, and that is two gold for Team GB. Wow. Had to wait around a big sigh after every gymnast would sit alongside, get a lower number, and he outlasts them all. We move now to the women's floor exercise, and yes, we will see Simone Biles once again. Here is the start list. De Jesus Dos Santos starts it off. Akimova from Russia. Suni Lee is in there. She qualified right behind Simone Biles. So very good. It looks great for Team USA in this floor. It absolutely does. You know, this is going to be an incredible event to end on, especially for Simone here. Stay on your feet and you are going to win yourself another gold medal. Simone has already won one today, her fourth at these World Championships, but we get underway with the 19-year-old from Saint-Marie, France, Melanie de Jesus dos Santos, qualified fifth. That'll be one tenth of a point. I don't know about you guys, but I feel good. <laughs> So great to see that she struggled in the all-around finals and the team finals. Great to see her end her world championships here on a good note. Been waiting to say that since you heard it. <laughs> Sixth on floor last year at the world championships and a very good ending. 
Absolutely, this can contend her mount. Super difficult, double laid out somersault with a full twist. Just a tiny little slide backwards. She does the hard tumbling, but she also has the artistic component, really shows off the dance. You can see that she enjoys it, has a good time, feels the music. Beautiful. And, you know, we talked about that earlier. Sometimes it is difficult to have that whole package, and Melanie absolutely does. But you see that one foot go out of bounds. So, Tim, as you mentioned, one-tenth deduction. Not a huge deal, but, of course, when it comes down to making that podium. Another great landing right at the end. Have always been a super fan of this young lady, Melanie. Wow. Born in Martinique, a French overseas region in the Caribbean. Her mom is from there. Her dad is Portuguese in France. Training. Crowd got into that midway through, too. 13.833, the number. More than the qualifying. See how long that holds up. Now in the qualifying round of competition, she actually had three tenths higher in her difficulty score. I don't know how they did that. There was one leap, the Tour right. full, that was a little iffy for me. Perhaps didn't get full credit for that, but. Part of the silver medal team here, Russia. Lilia Akhaimova. Really tough tumbling from start to finish. Same amount that we just saw. Oh, boy. Out of bounds and a large deduction. Super difficult routine. Unfortunately, a few too many errors on the landing and that opening pass and execution in general. Get that number for Lilia Kaimova, the 22-year-old from St. Petersburg, Russia. Day two of the apparatus finals. Women's floor underway, and Suni Lee, the teenager from Minnesota, about to get things started. Think of the week she's had here in her first trip to the World Championships, part of a gold medal effort for the Team USA, and then on uneven bars. Well, her first individual medal, just a spectacular routine. Struggled a little bit with consistency earlier in the week. Fell in the all-around finals. But there you have it, her first individual medal to add to that gold. As you mentioned, Terry, she will leave here from her first world championships as a world champion. Listening to her with Andrea after the, the teenager came out to <laughs> the excitement. And now at this stage, she was very good in qualifying. Number two, here she goes, Suni Lee. She actually had the same score as Jade Carey because she had a better execution score they broke the tie, she goes in. Only two gymnasts can compete from each country.
what a way to end her first Worlds. A tremendous routine, really hard. Double-double off the top, then a double layout. A little bit of a stumble at the end of her third tumbling run, but sticks the final pass. And Simone, who's become such a role model and friend, and guided her through this week. And Suni said, look, early in the week, nerves did get the better end of me, but not anymore, not now. Here is that double-double, just a small little slide. She's, as we were talking, Nastia, about uh, Melanie, she has those same qualities. She can dance, she's very artistic, but also is able to do the powerful skills Rare combination. She's got it all. There's that dismount, double backflip. Almost a stick. <laughs> so she was third in the USA last year as a junior. And she's now one of the very best gymnasts in the world. Senior level. What a transformation. Made her senior debut earlier this year. Incredible. Number one, 14.133 for Suni Lee. Family watching back at home, her dad recovering and watching every second of it. Been FaceTiming with them. They like it. <laughs> Suni Lee in the lead as we continue and with the floor now, exercises. Representing Russian Federation, Angelina Melnikova. Angelina Melnikova from Russia, part of that team silver, but also won a bronze in the all around. Difficulty starting value than Suni. Had some pretty good landings, lots of hard tumbling as well. Right off the top, though, she did a turn combination that looked like it wasn't exactly what she was hoping for. You know, those turn combinations are just as important as these very difficult tumbling passes like this one right here. Double out, full twisting double out. It almost seems like that's like the time to relax and take a deep breath, but they are some some of them are valued just as much as some of her tumbling passes. Double layout, another just small hop. If it's less than shoulder width apart, this got a little funky. That wolf turn that we just keep talking about, so many doing it on the balance beam and, and on the floor exercise. A great dismount, double pike, just a slight hot back. It is amazing with the incredible things they do that that turns out to be sometimes the most difficult. It's crazy. Most of the time on balance beam, but I don't know what they'll do with that, though. 
I'll think about who did get that individual medal here at the World Championships. He's been looking for the bronze in the all-around. So how close do you think this will be? Very. Absolutely. Russia, of course, competing in these worlds without their veteran, their star, Alia Mustafina. Two Olympic Games in a row. She has won Olympic gold on the uneven bars. She's been battling some injuries, but plans on making a run for that Russian team for Tokyo. She could potentially go three in a row on bars. She's still that good. She waits, Suni Lee waits beside her to see who will lead after this number is announced. And they're gonna make us wait some more. And take a look at some more wolf turns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would, uh, you know, typically when they're having, because they're discussing something right now, there's some discrepancy. And when they do that, it usually means that they didn't like something or there's something in question. That was not two complete turns right there. Does have that two tenths of a point cushion on Suni Lee for maximum potential score. You think it's long for us. Imagine being her. There you have it, 14.066 into second, so it's not enough. And it's Suni Lee who still leads here on floor. And next up, 20-year-old from Rio de Janeiro, Flavia Saraiva. Saw her on beam earlier. She qualified seventh for this floor final. Huge opening tumbling run. She'll do what's called a whip back, a flip with no hands right into a double layout. Right here. Ooh. Such a disappointing week for Team Brazil here. What a way for her to finish. Happy for her. She fell off the balance beam, but that was delightful. Got to the all around, earned a trip to Tokyo, Flavia Saraiva. Flavia Saraiva sitting next to Suni Lee as we wait for this number. 14-1-3-3 is what Suni Lee has. 13-9-6-6 into third place. So it's Suni Lee, Angelina Melnikova, and Flavia Saraiva, and we're down to the final two. How about this week for Suni Lee? Good for her. Absolutely. Yeah, on the podium. Ready to go, the 18-year-old from Canada, Brooklyn Moores, who didn't expect to be in this final. She 
qualified 11th, but it was Nina Durweil, the gold medalist from Uneven Bars this week, who withdrew, and here is Moores. Beautiful routine, just great choreography, and shows it off so well. Holly, that, that was stunning. You know, a lot of gymnasts throw their arms, their head back, and it doesn't mean anything. She's actually telling a story with her choreography, and it moves people. It moved me. Started off phenomenal. Her first tumbling run, this was awesome. Very unusual double front with a half into a leap. Oh. You know, she told us earlier that in her younger days, earlier on in her career, she just didn't have the power and the strength to do the tumbling passes that so many of these other athletes were doing. So she focused so much more on the choreography and, and boy, did it pay off. I yeah. mean, she is one of the most, in my opinion, artistic and graceful oh. gymnast out there right now. Well, look at that. I mean, she is feeling it every single thing. So hard to do that because when you dance to that level, it is exhausting. The only problem right at the end, not a good view, I think both of her toes were over the line, which is a 3 tenth deduction. We'll have to see if the judges had a good vantage for that. Went through a stress fracture injury in her back last year. It took some time to come back, and she said much of this season was building these programs back up comes from a gymnastics family her sister Victoria Moore's tremendous on floor exercise actually has a skill named after herself very difficult double twisting double layout Jade Carey does that for her first tumbling run now So I'm just looking at the scoreboard right now, and Flavia's actually put in an inquiry. So of course that can only, the only thing that can be changed in the score is the difficulty value, and if that goes up at all. But we have seen numerous times at these world championships that they look at it and they have the advantage of looking in slow motion and a lot of times they can see errors that aren't visible. You know, but in this We've situation. Seen the scores go down. Though. Absolutely, but in this situation, she's in third right now with Simone Biles to go. You're right. If it drops down anymore, she really has nothing to lose. Nothing to lose absolutely. by making the inquiry. I think there's probably a guy on the floor that has a lot of experience that thought of that strategy out. The great Valeri Lukin, the head coach of Brazil. So the number's 13,966. Melnikova is 14.066 in second place. Yeah, so one more tenth which would tie them, but my guess is that she has a higher execution score, which would break in her favor. If it is 
only so. one tenth of a point. How about the drama for the others, though, <laughs> right now as they wait? Everybody, really. Yeah. Simone being up next, uh -huh. taking a seat on the floor. Angelina, of course, currently in second. Thought she had secured a medal there. Remember Suni Lee earlier in the week had to wait forever and then had a mistake. She said that did contribute. Not to use an excuse, but she said it did. And you know, I don't have Flavia's routine really written down in front of me, but taking a look at all of her leap connections and turns, they all seemed like she did them very well. So if that was the case. So stay where you are, there is more to come. We were just talking about the wait for Simone Biles now. Yeah, I think she can handle it. I was going to ask you if that would, but, but not her. I think she might be okay. So the score was so the not score changed. was not. And it's 13 9 6, 6. So Shariva in third behind Melnikova. Brooklyn Moore's waist. That ending, you know, and both feet went out of bounds. That's very costly. She doesn't have the same level of difficulty. The judges are saying only one foot out of bounds, though. Into six, then guess who is sitting there on top of the leaderboard? Suni Lee's going to medal again, but here is the last gymnast to go, and of course, it is Simone. Biles. She could take one twist off of every single pass that she does and still win. She's not going to do that. Please don't. The first pass is her new Biles, the Biles 2 on floor, the triple double. Second pass is her first one, double layout with a half twist. Here we go. Did, I would say that was a connected leap, but one foot out of bounds, a tenth of a point. Tell you what, Terry, what that means right there is every single medal that she won here in Stuttgart is gold. Five of them. Wow. Already the most decorated gymnast ever at the World Championships and just adding to that number. And here's that opening tumbling pass, a triple twisting double back. Triple double. And she does it easy. Swear to God she could add another twist to that. Here is the Biles. Yeah, you get the leap credit there, certainly. She hasn't been able to pull that off. Pure greatness of Simone Biles. Innovator. Wow. And this is really hard to do as well. Third pass, already tired. Doesn't just do a front flip into that full twisting double, but lays it out. And then as hard or harder than the very best gymnast in the world, last pass, double twisting double. 
completely upright. You know, she's told us, and so many others, you see her coach, Laurent Landy, there celebrating. What an amazing week those two have had here. But she said this might be her very last world championships, and if it is, we have just had the true honor of watching her make history again. And it is a gold medal once again for Simone Biles. Five-time world champ on floor. Suni Lee and Angelina Melnikova round out the top three. Another individual medal for Melnikova. And how about Suni Lee in her first year as a senior? Gold, silver, and bronze. Wow. Whole collection. Number 19 for Simone Biles, 25 world medals. We gave a shout out to Simone's coach, Laurent. They are a coaching pair. Cecile Landi as well, very much a part of Simone's success. Well, I want to congratulate her. There we go. <laughs> so the vile story continues. And you start to look ahead to Tokyo and what she might accomplish there. This has been something else again in Stuttgart. Why not take another look at what we just saw from Simone Biles on her way to her 19th gold medal? I feel honored just to be around calling the gymnastics the magic that she shows every single time. A special time to be alive. And it really is a golden era. I mean, you're, you're watching the all-time best. And now, numbers-wise, at the World Championships, certainly that. Vitaly Sherbo at 23. And Simone Biles now, her fifth gold of these championships. She's got 25. Says her mom keeps these in a safe. She's got the key. So, <laughs> And I, I would like to see a picture with all of these in the Olympic medals as well. Yeah, 25 world medals and five Olympic medals. And she's sure to add a bunch of them in Tokyo. Can can you imagine getting them all around her neck? I don't think she could stand. <laughs> so her week, it's been a very busy one, is in the books. And we are down to the final event here, the apparatus finals, the men's high bar. Teen Serbic from Croatia will lead it off. Some names that we got used to watching this week. Lin Xiaopan, Artur Delaloyan. It'll be Sam McCulloch, the only American male to make it to one of these finals. Think back the up and down, the emotions of last year. This was last year. He was in the hunt and on his last event faltered. He told Andrea Joyce that was the saddest day of his entire life. Came back a few days later, got some redemption by winning a bronze on high bar. He's capable of that and more. It's just which Sam do we get today? And we got a very different one than we did in qualifying throughout the team competition. And uh, and the all-around came down to a mistake late in that one. But it was a different Sam McCulloch than the one that started the week. Yeah, the one that started the week was just truly devastating. I would say just so many mistakes, very unlike him, what we are used to seeing at a national championships on U.S. soil, unfortunately, has faltered internationally quite a bit. And, you know, he faltered in qualification on parallel bars. And he had a legitimate shot to not just win a medal, but gold. He scored a 15-3-2-5 and a 15-2 in the other competitions, which would have put him atop the podium. Yep. All right, first of the eight here, the 23-year-old from Zagreb, Croatia. Team Servic, who won the gold a couple of years ago in Montreal, was the defending champion last year, but came up just short, missed the podium, and finished fourth, qualified third here. One of the cleanest gymnasts that you'll see Beautiful work, got to do a lot of things in connection as you're seeing right here 
one more. Oh! Wow. Four in a row. That is so hard to do. His fifth release. Got to go to a handstand here. A little bit shy. Probably three tenths of a point on that. Nice dismount, slight hop backwards. That was tremendous. Doing all of those releases in a row, starting with that stall to reverse heck. You see a lot of that on the women's side, but the men really struggle with this element right here. Perfectly on. Another one. And then to do a laid out one for the third and follow it up. Wow. Really tough stuff. Not the hardest difficulty score we'll see, but right up there. And boy, is he ever clean. Execution excellent. One tenth only on that hop. But you know, you say it might not have been the highest level of difficulty, but watching this routine and maybe not necessarily judging, you know, what that difficulty was, definitely seemed like he took almost the most risk by doing all of those release moves. Well, the thing about it, when you do them combined like that, you have to be super far from the bar, which you can miss. Lower than the qualifying score, 14-6, 6-6. So Team Servich sets the standard, and we move on here in the Next final time, event. Tong Cha Hung, who qualified number one. 23-year-old from Chinese Taipei. Once again, they have had a phenomenal competition. Qualified for the team final. Earned a full team. Beautiful. Ooh, kind of fumbled that grip a little bit. His combination. Oh, oh no. Such a shame. He does this reverse hecht with a half turn. And the hand that he didn't get on the bar is typically the easy one to grab. Or actually, I shouldn't say that. Ugh. So anytime you fall men or women's gymnastics, it's an automatic one point deduction. He will lose the element and he'll lose at least three tenths on that one skill for not being in the handstand. What a shame. No margin for error. One moment, one mistake. And that was a big one. Yes, it was. And really almost zero chance that he comes out with a medal. So in qualifying, though, he had the highest number. Guess who was second? Sam Makulak. And he goes last, which I'm not quite sure if that is a good scenario or a bad scenario for Sam. What do you think, Dusty? I mean, I've said it once. I, I did not like going last, and especially if you are one to watch the scoreboard or watch the other athletes. You know exactly what you need. Some some like to know exactly what they need in order to perform their best, but I prefer going yeah. earlier. <laughs> he has yet to do a skill that he has added. We saw in Kansas City at the national championships, a full twisting reverse hack. I know the plan coming in was 
He would do it in the individual event finals right here. You think strategy will be dictated by what takes place before him, though? Oh, it should be. And I I'm sure it will be as well. But, but you never know. I mean, it's been a disappointment for him, so he may just go all out. Third gymnast to go here on high bar. Lin Xiaopan, the 24-year-old from China, qualified sixth, but had the highest maximum potential score of 16.5. Nice release. Bend his elbows on that giant, you can't do that. Here come the big ones. That was great. Gotta go right to a handstand. A little short on that one. And that handstand was way past. As was that. Everything in gymnastics, risk, reward. Yes, you can gain a tenth for doing something a little harder, but sometimes you lose three. Double, double. Big hop on the landing. That's a three-tenth hop. It was good, but there were plenty of errors in that routine. The score that Tin Servich got, I thought, was a little bit low. I, didn't quite get that. It was much cleaner than this exercise. You see his feet come apart a little bit. And watch his elbows here on the giant. He bends them. That is at least three tenths of a point. His major release, full twisting double back over the bar, called a Coleman. They are the but all of the handstand elements, let's look at this one, has to be exactly straight up. And when his hand goes down, that is a minimum of three-tenths of a point. Not maybe even more. Yeah. You know, very similar to what we were just talking about on the floor exercise, you get through the difficult skills, those release moves, but those handstands are just as important as those high-flying elements. We're being super critical because it's exactly what the judges are doing. See how critical now. 14.033 in the second place. So Dean Servic still leads the way in the high bar. Yeah, good job with that. They did it right. Had over two points of deductions out of that 10.0. He was in the upper sevens. Artur Delaloyan, you know all about him. It comes down to this, the final event. He qualified number five. Team gold, vault silver, all around silver. He has been phenomenal, but no individual gold medals for him, unlike last year at the Worlds. Big release right here. Oh, and he added that in. He is going for it. I thought he had to do more. If he wanted a shot at the top spot, did not do that full twisting double back in the laid out position. Hasn't done it since he's been in Stuttgart. Look for the handstand. Oh, Gorgeous. Perfect. Another release right here. This is a phenomenal exercise. Double, double laid out. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. And he cannot believe the outcome of that last element. That was a three tenth step, and certainly. Chest down. This is the skill he added. It's called a casina, named after the great Italian gymnast who won an Olympic gold medal. 
hiked, double back over the bar or Kovacs. And really just going all out. Beautiful, stretched, pecked over the bar. But right here, I don't know if he just thought he was further around. You see, that's a bounding step forward. At least three tenths for that step, and the chest being down, and the coach. <laughs> and the leader, and the man who was spectacular until that moment. I think he increased his maximum score. I know he did. 14-5-3-3 in the second. So you mentioned no individual gold medals here. Could be a silver, but Servic still leads the way. And it was that dismount that cost yeah. him the top spot for now. Andrew Mariano from Brazil, 26 years of age. The Olympic bronze medal on floor back in 2016. It's one of my favorite Olympic moments. It was he couldn't watch the, as the other competitors were going had his head buried, and then just absolutely jubilant. Gorgeous, right to the handstand. He also does a bunch of releases in a row. Here we go. Very nice. Full twisting laid out, somersault. Nicely done. Double, double. Oh, oh and oh. almost a stick. Oh. <laughs> it grew as did the crowd's energy throughout the entire routine. Beautiful job. <laughs> Three major releases in a row, lots of flight. Excellent turn at the conclusion of that last release. Now watch this right here. Very few gymnasts do this skill. It's a full twisting laid out somersault. It's actually called a Winkler Salto after Long time ago, German gymnast. I wonder if any of the Germans in the house remember seeing him do that. I saw him do it. Gorgeous skill, though. Not many, as you mentioned, Tim. Do it on the men's side. I actually tried it yeah. on the uneven bars. Really? Never competed it, but. The great Kenzo Shirai also does that. But only a handful of gymnasts. The only thing, that one step at the end. <laughs> Qualified, his score was a 14.6, the score to beat 14.666. Number one on the board, Mariano Artur. Servich was the first to go, but it is the man from Brazil who leads now. <laughs> Had that super success in Rio, as we said, with that bronze medal on floor exercise, has been absent from the podium since then. Three more athletes left on high bar for the gold medal. Daiki Hashimoto from Japan, the 18-year-old now, he qualified eighth. Beautiful looking gymnast on every event, just so clean. Big release coming up right here. Same release that we saw Dalaloyan add to his routine. Once again, the judges are looking for the handstand. 
And that was not good. At least three tenths. It was gorgeous, and that, that one, one as, well. as well. Talked to a judge here. He said it's the gymnasts are better off not even doing them. Big step on the landing. He's got a great future in gymnastics, but that shouldn't make it to the podium. Mariano leads it. You got a couple of guys left, and it's McCulloch from the U.S. who will be last to go. Waiting for the number. Daiki Hashimoto after that effort on high bar. Not going to be enough to get into the top three. 14-2-3-3. Artur Mariano bringing them out of their seats here in Stuttgart with his effort on high bar. And with the lead down to the final two. Tyson Bull from Australia, 26 years of age. Great opportunity for him to be here in these finals. It's in all America at the University of Illinois at High Bar in 2016. Can do some massive releases. Very nice. Here we go. I believe he's going to try to do it in combination. And that is what happens. He was trying to connect those double back flips, which is so hard to do. You got to be far enough from the bar. Just can't get his hands completely around the bar. There's a thing called a dowel on his grip. So his fingertips were on, but the dowel was not on. And really almost impossible to stay on when that happens. It's a shame because when he does it, it's magical. I think he's going to try again. Yep. And here he goes. Handles it. He's got more to do. You mentioned a gymnast for the University of Illinois, the Illini, the coach there, Justin Spring himself, an Olympian and a tremendous high bar worker. Well, there you got it. Gymnastics 101, baby. Fly high and stick the landing. Didn't think we were going to hear that today. So sorry for him that he couldn't switch the order. This was awesome, though. Double backs or Kovacs over the bar connected to a full twisting double. Really tough stuff. You take the risk, though. And this is gorgeous. Little bit of leg separation at the end, but I'll tell you what, to swing high bar with guys like this, you have got to be extremely daring. That bar is solid metal, and let me tell you, I've hit it many a time, sometimes even on my chin, and it is not a fun thing to happen. It's really too bad because it was uh, the the second part of it was outstanding. It was. Mariano leads it, and obviously going to get a gold or a silver. We'll see. Serbich in second. Dalaloyan currently in third with one man left. Thirteen point two in sixth place. So it comes down to the final man on high bar and the final opportunity for the U.S. men to take a medal home from these world championships. Here is Sam McCulloch, a bronze medal on high bar last year. Can he challenge for gold? If Sam does what he's capable of, not only will he make the podium, he's going to be wearing a gold medal. 
Very possible. Two big releases right here. Gorgeous. One of the cleanest gymnasts in the world. Now this is where he was planning on adding an upgrade. See if he goes for it. He does! Oh boy! Had to bend his elbows on that giant. And another little struggle there. Really low on that handstand. Well, he went for it. My book, the hardest routine. Three-tenth hop on the landing. He scored a 14.866. In qualifying, did a harder routine here. You know, it's going to be tough. It's a tough, obviously did that difficult routine here, but a few more places where there was just some deduction. And of course, that landing, that dismount. But look at this. Nobody does it any better than Sam McCulloch. Opens up, perfect form, no leg separation, no nothing. I think this is his new release, full twisting. Laid out hex called the Lucan after Valeri, but look at the elbows bending. Ugh. That skill is what he missed in the all around last year. You see the bent elbows again. He had a slight leg separation. Here's that dismount, double twisting, double out. And enough to pick apart to keep him from getting there? The top spot, I would say so. I, I would think say he's on I, the medal podium. Yeah, but. I think he has a, has a shot at that. So wanted to make the podium in the all-around. That's what he's been pointing to. It didn't happen. He came in seventh. He's all the way down in fifth. Mariano down to his knees in tears as the gold medalist. Can't believe it. Yeah, we have had a handful on the men's side of gymnasts that really I'm sure dreamed of winning gold, but never thought it would be a reality. Artur Mariano, the gold medalist. Serbic, Dalloloyan rounded out the podium here. And this one's in the books. High bar complete. Back in a moment, Stuka. So, how do you characterize it? Yet another one of those Simone Biles days. Two more gold medalists for the greatest gymnast ever. And afterwards, she talked to Andrea Joyce. Once again, Simone into the history books. This one is gigantic. The most decorated world's gymnast, male or female, of all time. You want to just take this microphone and drop it? No, no we're good. No, it's, it's an honor um, that I've gotten to compete for the country so many times and I, I'm just proud of the performances I've been able to put out for our country. But when you take a step back outside of your own body and you look at what you've been able to accomplish, how impressed and how amazed are you at what you've been able to do? Very impressed with what I've been able to do, especially after all these days of competition. Just keep the dice rolling basically and it's just, it's insane. Your reaction? after beam yeah. was probably the best we've seen all week. Take us back to that moment and what was going through your mind. I've trained so hard on beam and that was one of my nerve wracking events that I go out and compete for. So I was really happy to put up a routine just like how I train it and to get the result back world champion on beam. It feels very good. We showed your boyfriend Stacy's reaction. You looked a little bit like him. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, that's rough. <laughs> 20, 20, 25 world championship medals. You have said you're almost certain that you, this will be your last. What do you think now? That's got a nice round number to it. 
Yeah, I think so. It's older than my age, so I'm pretty thrilled with it. You think this is your last? We'll see. Maybe. I don't know. You have also said that you continue to amaze yourself. You always want to do better than you did in your last competition. So what are you looking forward to as you get ready for Tokyo? Oh, getting ready for Tokyo, just keeping that consistency going. And uh, we'll see if we have any little upgrades here and there. But definitely the consistency factor is the biggest part. How are you going to celebrate? I'm not sure yet. Um, we go home tomorrow and then we'll see. I have no idea what everybody has planned. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Extra suitcase for the medals. <laughs> yeah. She didn't entirely close the door, but it may indeed be her last world championship. But look at these numbers, guys. Unbelievable. And, you know, you've got, you've just got legends there. But as she proved, being the most decorated, she's a step above everyone on that list. And boy, is that a list. And, and not only is that a list, but I don't think anybody will ever be able to top 25, but this is where it all started. Her very first World Championships, 2013. That was the first Biles. She put it in the code of points and it just continued. Last year in Doha at the World Championships, she did the unthinkable. This vault right here, also the Biles. Unbelievable. But it didn't stop there. Of course, we saw here even more history, a triple twisting double back. Absolutely incredible. And she said that it's more important to her than medals to have her name, that one right there, the double-double in the rule book forever and ever. Wow. Lucky to be here to watch all of that. 19 goals, 25 career medals at Worlds for Simone Biles and all of this against the backdrop of the fact that it is 285 days till the opening ceremony in Tokyo at the Olympics and the major players who are here starring on this stage, they will be there as well. Can't wait for that. It has been a wonderful week here in Stuttgart, Germany, the World Gymnastics Championships. Stars playing out, but it has been the stage for that woman, Simone Biles. Fantastic. For Nastia Luke and Tim Daggett and Andrea Joyce, I'm Terry Gannon. Thanks for watching the World Championships here in Germany, everybody.